Hey folks, we just got done riding Honda's 2021 Rebel 1100. This is the latest and greatest addition to Honda's Rebel lineup. Now, the Rebel has a storied history with Honda. If you can even believe it, Honda's been making this motorcycle for 36 years. And this Rebel 1100 is its largest displacement Rebel that it's ever manufactured. Honda cited that the popularity of this Rebel 500, people buy these bikes, they ride them a lot. They're awesome bikes, but they're a little bit underpowered once you really get into motorcycling, you start going farther distance and you get out of the city. And they needed a place for these riders to go, hence the Rebel 1100. Now the Rebel 1100 is powered by Honda's 1084cc parallel twin. This is the engine that Honda uses in its 2020 Africa Twin. And this engine is just awesome. It has gobs of torque, gobs of horsepower, it's smooth, and it's even better with Honda's eighth, ninth generation DCT. Honda's been making these dual clutch transmissions for 11 years now and they've, they've outfitted it in so many bikes and made so many tweaks to the system, the hardware, the electronics, that it's hard to even know what generation the DCT is even in, eighth or ninth. But all these changes they've made have made a, a transmission package that is just, it's so easy to ride, it's so smooth, it's so fun. If you're someone who's always been maybe intimidated about riding motorcycles, the DCT option is really gonna make a vehicle that's easier for you to operate. If you're a ex more experienced rider with you know hundreds of thousands of miles under your belt, the DCT is gonna work for you really well too because it's gonna allow you to focus more on the ride, on the sights, the sounds, the feelings, uh, all the R&D work Honda's done with this dual clutch transmission, it, it shifts gears very accurately based on, on what speed you're going, your lean angle, how hard or soft you are on the, on the throttle input, and the ability to shift manually with the push of a button. You can pick your gears. It's very much like a sports car where you have a paddle shifter and you just go up and down through the gearbox. Of course, the dual clutch uh, setup allows those gear changes to happen instantaneously. And when you're downshifting, it, it sh downshifts so quickly, it's almost like it has an auto blipper. And what that does is it just allows that rear tire to be hooked up against the asphalt, gives you more stability when you're about to crank it over in the turn. Speaking of cranking over in the turns, this Rebel 1100 is outfitted with mid controls. So not full forward like you'd see on a touring or bagger style motorcycle and not full rear like you'd see on a conventional standard motorcycle. Um, I'm not much of a mid control guy, I either like them out far front or out back, but you can't deny the level of comfort that this Rebel 1100 has and the lean angle. I mean, most cruisers with mid controls, you can't barely lean them over for anything without them to start dragging hard parts and feeling all wiggly wobbly and crappy. This thing you can lean over, uh, it requires a surprising amount of lean angle for those foot pegs to dig in. Ergonomics on this bike, even though it's an 1100cc machine, this vehicle is smaller in terms of proportions. I'm six foot tall and I'd be lying if I told you I didn't feel a little cramped on this motorcycle. Of course, the seat height is super low. It's very narrow. The handlebar is relatively narrow too, but I like the handlebar position. It's not too tall, it's not too low. It doesn't have too much rearward sweep, not too much forward sweep. Overall, a very nice and well-proportioned ergonomics package, if not orientated toward a smaller rider. Another neat feature I like on this Rebel 1100 is the under seat storage compartment. You put a three pack in there, you know, there's also a USB charging port so you can plug in your gadgets and charge on the go. Twin disc brakes really do a good job of slowing this 500 some pound bike down. I wish it had double front disc brakes, but that's more of a wish just based on aesthetics. I really like the look of a dual disc front brake setup on a bike, but this thing does have good stopping power, a big radial mount for piston caliper, really puts the clamps down on that front 
brake caliper. And of course, in typical cruiser fashion, the rear disc brake has a lot of power, a lot of feel. This bike stops really well. IMU powered ABS helps mitigate any wheel instability when you're using the brakes too aggressively for the, the asphalt, the condition of asphalt, if there's slippery stuff on there, rain, etc. Because this bike has an IMU, that also powers Honda's selectable torque control. That's Honda speak for traction control. There's multiple adjustments in there and that allows you to mitigate any rear wheel instability when you're giving her the beans. I liked riding the motorcycle with traction control manually disabled. It made it more fun. You could kind of slide it around the corner when you're riding in the gravel and it just makes for a, a more fun riding experience. Ride by wire facilitates cruise control adjustable engine power modes. Obviously the more power the better. I like riding it in the high power mode. There's also an engine brake setting which controls the engine butterflies and allows the engine more or less deacceleration when you're let off the throttle. I like the bike with the least amount of engine braking, but if you're more familiar with a traditional cruiser experience where you let the, the compression of the engine slow you down, you can opt for a high engine compression braking effect and it, it lets the bike slow down a little quicker without having to use the brakes as aggressively. $10,000 this Honda Rebel 1100 really represents good value. It looks cool, it has a lot of power, it's comfortable, it handles very well. Even though it weighs 500 pounds in motion, it feels very much lighter than the spec chart implies. And Honda really took a lot of time to make sure that this bike would be easy to take apart. You can take apart the components on it. You can, there's a whole line of, of factory accessories from Honda so you can customize this motorcycle very much like you'd customize a vehicle from the Bar and Shield brand. And if you're looking for a high quality, well built, small to mid sized 1100cc cruiser, this Honda Rebel will be good for you. All right, folks, that wraps up the 2021 Honda Rebel 1100 review. Make sure to surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com where the written con content will live. Check out our channel, Motorcyclist Mag on YouTube. We'll also have some other ancillary Honda Rebel 1100 uh, videos on there. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Thumbs it down if you thought it sucked. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.